Hello class. Today we are going to talk about this book, uh, Roland Barthes, The Language of Fashion. And your reading was uh, chapter 9 of this little book. It was a short essay written by Roland Barthes in 1966. That was long, long time ago, about 60 years ago. And you might think uh, the contents that uh, he's discussing uh, might not be relevant for today's situation and today's fashion circumstances, but uh, actually the real thing is many people who are discussing and uh, talking about this book are uh, saying like it's even more relevant today. That is frightening because what he had uh, predicted about the future of fashion is pretty much the same that what we are discussing right now. So uh, we are going to go deeper uh, how he mentioned about the meanings of the fashion and the fashion as a social phenomena at the same time as fashion as personal choices. All right. So for today, uh, we are going to talk about uh, Roland Barthes' understandings and uh, theories about fashion. And then I'm going to go ahead and explain more about your individual project, consumer profiling. Right? Roland Barthes is very famous, a French sociologist and French critic very keen critic and he criticized uh, the cultural world and cultural phenomenon around him in 1960s around 1960s and uh, specifically in this book he criticized about the American society what is happening in America because uh, during those ages America was um, ruling the world actually uh, they were saying like fashion is at New York right now uh, that was what uh, the typical Americans were uh, being very self-respectful and being proud uh, of uh, helping other countries to prevail and to be civilized and that was uh, their kind of mind uh, the cultural mind of the people who are living in the united states so um roland bart uh, mentioned and criticized pretty much about uh, those phenomena happening what's happening in the american world and Roland Barthes is very famous semiologist. Semiologist is a scholar who is studying semiotics. A semiotics is a study about signs. Okay, so uh, the study about signs. So uh, he has uh, studied pretty much about the signs of the object and the si sign of certain things like or phenomenon like fashion. So signs of fashion. Uh, has been studied pretty much about, uh, pretty much by Roland Bard. Okay, so uh, he had mentioned about uh, the fashion is a sign. So fashion uh, it could be expressed in language. So, like glamorous or fancy, luxurious, and those kind of fancy words that you might uh, think of. Uh, could be uh, one expression what the media or the fashion system uh, is talking about when they're presenting new fashion, right? Okay, so uh, he, I'm going to read this sentence here. The word of high fashion industry uses images and words to create an abstract word of fashionableness they are creating they're inventing the fashionableness what is fashion and what is not fashion they're creating the words to describe how fancy or how fashionable it is and that must at once always change so the fashion word and uh, the word which is describing fashionable should be changed because the new yesterday was not new for today anymore so that is why our fashion industry one changes all the time to pro to promote to promote uh, the consumers um, active <laughs> a use of the new fashion active consumption of the new fashion that is why uh, they are constantly uh, changing uh, the images and the words to describe new fashion right so in order to continue to sell a new fashion and always stay the same 
Um, and also, in order to continue to sell new fashions, uh, they are uh, continuously uh, making new words and new fashion all the time. So uh, he had criti uh, criti criticized pretty much about uh, this phenomenon. So while he was talking about the meanings of the fashion, and then he suddenly talked about the meanings of clothes, okay? So he separated the meanings of fashion and clothes. And clothes, he asked us a very fundamental kind of question. Why do we wear clothes? Why human beings invented clothes? And he answered like with three basic, very basic reasons like first, to protect our body uh, from the harsh weather and two, to uh, hide our body, hide, hide our nudity yeah, for the modest, modesty reasons and three, to decorate our body in, to, to, to make it look better and to um, express ourselves in somehow. So that was uh, where the clothing myths, uh, the meanings. So we'd like to deliver some kind of meanings with our clothes. Hmm. And it has very, very contradictory kind of uh, reasons why we're wearing clothes. So in some phase, we'd like to express ourselves, to reveal ourselves. But at the same time, we'd like to hide uh, some part of our minds, some part of our uh, thinking, thoughts or moods to hide. So we are just uh, wearing clothes for many, many uh, different reasons. So that is where Roland Barthes discussed about the real uh, reason and the real meanings of clothing uh, should be embedded, should be overlaid to the meanings of the fashion. So it'll be happening in the future where people uh, when people recognize that fashion system is running it's cycling uh, for the sake of the changes so that is um, nonsense they don't understand anymore uh, for the purpose of those existence so uh, people uh, will recognize and started to criticize the existence of a fashion system and the fashion system itself will be disrupted disrupted and to be disrupted due to the growth and to, to the growth of the the the, the overall uh, world, like in Asian countries and in African countries, we are gonna all be uh, globalized. That means uh, we are gonna um, divide our wealth pretty well, uh, as well as our information and and know-hows will be also well divided. In that case, uh, the fashion itself to distinct one society from the other society uh, is not necessary anymore in some day. So that is what Roland Barthes has predicted about the future of fashion. And this is actually happening uh, in this fashion system right now. And he had uh, stressed pretty much about the personal choice because fashion is personal choice. Uh, it is uh, you and the, and the person, individual person, who is going to choose to adopt certain fashion or not. So the individual choice is, could be uh, the very the most important part uh, when we're discussing about the fashion. So that was Roland Barthes' prediction. So in this chapter, while uh, Roland Barthes was talking about fashion and change, uh, he quoted and mentioned pretty much about Mr. Kroeber's rhythm of fashion. There is a rate, the speed of the fashion and the cycle of fashion has been studied by uh, this American anthropologist who studied uh, pretty much about fashion because he uh, did a very in-depth study uh, just as Roland Barthes has mentioned, in-depth study about the cycle of fashion for the past 
300 years. So uh, he uh, just reviewed and analyzed the patterns and the cycles of the fashion changes. And he concluded that the fashion changes in every 50 years. Okay, so for the past 30, uh, uh, 300 years fashion, the new fashion has been uh, introduced and then the exact same fashion, the exact same style will be reintroduced in 50 years. <sighs> Okay, so that is a pretty uh, predictable and kind of logical uh, kind of findings uh, for us to understand what, all right? So uh, we don't know. And we are always talking about the fashion cycle is being shortened and being very fast. So the fashion cycle rules that a lot of fashion scholars has mentioned is not going to be relevant anymore to explain about today's fashion, right? Yes, but who knows? Because I've been here uh, living in this world for 40 years and you are living your years for about 20 years. So we never know. Okay, So what is going to happen uh, in 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 50 years we we never know <laughs> yeah but the real thing is all the micro changes that uh, we are experiencing like in 20th centuries and in 21st centuries could be minor minor changes uh like um, combined so we are viewing every details of the fashion changes but if the people who are living like 100 years later and then uh, they're gonna go ahead and study about the fashion cycle of the 21st centuries yeah, and how much they're gonna count about the images or the images or the styles of the fashion so we don't know but what uh, Roland Bart has criticized about this kind of study was because uh, what um, Alfred uh, Kroeber, the American anthropologist, had uh, in his mind while doing his study was culture, the prevailing culture, mm. uh, is uh, the social determinant of civilization. So uh, the civil, more civilized culture will be transcended to the less civilized culture. So uh, that is why uh, uh, people uh, like to imitate what the people wear, especially the people having power is wearing. Uh, people want to imitate what they wear. Okay, So that was um, the major uh, hypothesis that Alfred Kober had. And uh, on this chapter, he has also mentioned about his study about American and uh, the Native Americans. In Kroeber's work, he labeled the Native Americans like Indians or American Indians. And then uh, he said that it's basic human characteristics to adopt the more civilized culture. So they'd like to adopt those culture yeah, from more civilized world. Yeah, and those kind of uh, theories to um, adapt the culture, the the better, uh, higher culture will be transcended uh, to the people who would like to imitate those images has been uh, copied, exactly copied to his studies about the fashion. So that is the point that um, Roland Barthes has criticized about. So it was the fashion cycle, the cycles of the distinction and the imitation and the predictability of the fashion changes cannot be answered right now uh, from nobody. Yeah, but the real thing is what is important uh, to the people who are living like 60 years ago and people who are living right now yeah, could be different. So that is uh, the point that uh, Roland Barthes uh, tried to make. 